If you are what you say you are, a superstar, then have no fear. The camera's here and the microphones, and they wanna know. Oh, oh, oh. We're the mighty few. Um, this is an opportunity for you guys to really grow, really transform yourselves. I don't have to motivate you. You're already motivated. That's why you're here. That's why you're here this morning. And so with that being said, I want to just applaud you for being here. If we could, let's just please stand. Go ahead and stand to your feet. What we're going to do is recite the MVP creed. That is something that's going to be our model. This is something that I want you to put into your mind every day that you wake up, all right? So repeat after me. The MVP Creed. Let's try it again. The MVP Creed. Men of vision and purpose is who we are. We will intentionally strive to know ourselves and seek self-improvement. We're humble in word and deed. Intelligent and proud. An influencer wherever we go. Nothing can hinder our success. We're leaders who lead by example. We will not fail. We're MVP. All right, let's shake it up, man. All right. Go ahead and have a seat, guys.
here. How many of you believe that? If you want something, go get it. Everybody should believe that, right? I mean, everybody sitting in here, you're an athlete for the most part, right? I mean, be it in the classroom, academically, be it on the football field, the basketball court, the baseball diamond, in the weight room, you want something, you're gonna go get it. And that's the point of this video here, is that each one of those guys you saw on the video, they changed their culture. They changed the culture that they were in. And that's what we're gonna talk about. We're gonna talk about creating the right culture for growth. All right? Now, how do you do that? Well, first of all, you gotta know the environment that you're in, the people that you're dealing with. In your case, peers, right? Not just your peers, but your underclassmen. They're looking at you. Each one of you guys are known by someone in the school, right? You have the power to change the culture of your environment here at Lafayette High School. You have the power and the ability to change what happens out there in the commons, what happens in the cafeteria, what happens in the classroom, all around the school. Not only that, but you got the power once you leave this building because you're still connected here, right? Something happens outside on the school, outside the school grounds, you're still a Lafayette student, still a football player, still a basketball player, still a baseball player, right? That's how you're known, but you're still attached to the school. So how do you change the climate? How do you change the environment? Know your peers, know your underclassmen. Not what they say they're doing, but what they're actually doing. And you got to know what people value. If you know those things, you can start to change. But you got to know what people are doing, what they're saying, what they value. Now here's the thing. Not only do you need to know what they value and what they expect, you also need to know what you expect. That's the first thing you got to do if you want to change the culture. What's your expectations? So you need to ask a question. You need to ask this question every day that you wake up. You need to ask yourself, how do I create a culture of assessment? How do I assess myself and how do I make others assess themselves? You did it this morning. When you got dressed, you started assessing yourself. When you did your personal hygiene, you started assessing yourself. Now, leadership and mentorship is a lot bigger than what you put on and how you do your hair. But it's about a mindset. If you, if you look at how you can change the culture of assessment at your school, that's a bigger impact than the genes that you have on. Am I right? That's what changing the culture of assessment is. It's, it's looking inside yourself and saying, how can I get better every day? How can I grow every day? And in turn, when people look at me, how are they gonna produce? So how can I grow every day? How can I assess myself every day? And how can I make other people produce? Now the thing about people when you talk about production is that when you guys start producing, you might lose some friends because you're changing, you're growing. And some people can't go where you want to go. They can't travel the same road, right? So you're going to lose some people along the way. But you're still growing, you're still moving. So as you grow and you keep moving, now you start to change a culture, you start to change an environment based on what you're doing because people are watching you. Now this can't be something that's uh, uh, an instinctive thing. It has to be an intentional thing. It's not like your eye movements or, or your breathing. The only time you really concentrate on that is when people talk about it, right? You only concentrate on your breathing or when your eyes are blinking if I mention it. But other than that, you just go about your day and then let it do what it does. Changing a culture though, it has to be intentional because you need to think about what you're doing every day that you're here. Every day that you show up here, you are changing the culture for good or bad, but it's how you want to be received. It's how you want to be perceived that's going to make the difference. So you have to create a culture of, a culture of assessment 
but first assessing yourselves. you know who that was? Bruce Lee? You ever seen a karate movie of Bruce Lee? Pretty electrifying, right? I mean, there's nobody that has ever been in the martial arts community like Bruce Lee. I mean, he's just that energetic, right? When you see him or you think about martial arts, you don't think about Chuck Norris. You think mostly about Bruce Lee because he, he, he revolutionized what we think about martial arts. You know, he was a guy that, that had a culture of positive energy. Everywhere he went, he was just that person. You ever met people like that in, in the high school here? That wherever they go, they bring that positive energy, right? Well, as a leader, guess what? As a mentor, guess what? You have to have that positive energy. You just don't have it during your sporting event. It should be a part of who you are. When you're missing from your group, they should be like, wow, where, where's that guy? Because he's the life of the party in terms of positive energy. Everything has energy. I don't care what you build, it's going to have some energy. You can put a meter on it, and some energy is going to come from it. Now, it might not always be good energy, and we know people like that, right? We see them here in our environment every day. They don't always bring good energy. That doesn't mean that they're bad. It's at that particular time, they don't have positive energy. But you don't have that option. You can't have a bad day. Because everybody's looking at you. Right? So you always have to have that positive energy. And everybody that plugs into you, they need to be energized. That's just the way it is. You don't have an option. If you want to be a leader. Because everybody's riding on you. So if you have a bad day before you come through the doors of Lafayette, now you need to change that. Because people are watching you. Everybody sitting in here, people know who you are. And there are people that are watching you, underclassmen, your peers. They might not tell you they are, but they're assessing you. That's why it's important that you assess yourself first and realize what power you bring to the school, right? You bring the energy. Guys, I'm telling you, the males of this school control the environment. 
And the quicker you understand it, the quicker you can change it. Or the drop of a hat by just your actions. Right? Bruce Lee said what? Become like water. Be shapeless. Be formless. He says if you put water into a glass, it becomes a glass. If you put it into a teapot, it becomes the teapot. He says water what? Can flow or it can be silent or it can crash. Well, you definitely don't want to crash. You want to be that silent guy. You want to be the calm one. The rational one. Right? But you got to be shapeless. You got to form to your, your environment. I didn't say conform. I said form. Now you have the power to shape it based on what you do or what you don't do. So if the environment doesn't get better after you learn what you learned today, then it's on you because you hadn't applied what you learned. Third thing, you want to create a, a culture of leadership development. Create a culture of leadership development. One thing you need to know about leadership is never going to change. This is a principle that will never change. You can only go as high in leadership as the people, number of people that you have below you to take your spot. When you leave here, all you guys are seniors, right? One junior. When you leave here, what legacy are you going to leave? How do you want to be remembered? You can create that culture of leadership development right now. You don't have to be the superstar. But when people put their name, put your name to leadership, now see, that's good. I was a leader. Now who in here thinks they're a leader? Who in here thinks they're a leader? Everybody should. However, if you don't, then you're not. But if you say you are, then you are. Nobody's going to come and knight you a leader. Right? Nobody's going to come with an iron scepter and say, I knight you leader. If you say you are, then you are. Now you just got to gain the tools to be a better leader. Remember, it's like that pyramid, right? If you've ever seen the, the pyramids in Egypt, they go pretty steep. But the base is wide. It's like building a card, a, car, a house of cards. The base has to be solid before you can start building layer on layer, right? It's the same with leadership. Everybody that, that is connected to you must understand that you're a leader. Everybody. If they plug into you, they got to understand what your expectations are, what you expect, because they can't be connected to you if they're not. You don't want anybody hanging on to you that's going to slow your path down. Remember, the quickest way to your destiny is they stay on the road to it. That's the only way you're going to get there. Mentorship. You can only mentor those who want to be mentored. You're here because you want to be mentored. You're here because you want to be a leader or learn some things to make you a better leader. This is a voluntary program, so you, nobody forced you here. You came on your own free will and accord. That means that you're ready to grow. And you see something in this program that can help you get where you want to be. You see something in the men that are going to be coming in front of you that are going to help you get where you want to be. Because you're ready for it. You can only mentor those who are ready to be mentored. Now, you have to understand as well, there are people, underclassmen, that are watching you. There are your peers that are watching you. So every word that come out of your mouth, they're going to judge you for it. Because now you're an MVP, you're in the MVP program. They want to see how you're going to change. That's always the case. No matter if you're in this program, no matter when you go out into the world, when you say that you're something, people are going to try to hold you to that. So that assessment comes in, right? Always got to assess yourself. Always got to have that positive energy. Helping others. Leaders always help others. They don't expect anything to come back to them. 
they always freely give because they already freely receive. Every man that comes before you, we didn't get where we are by ourselves. It's like seeing that turtle on the fence post. You know it didn't put itself there. Somebody put it there. Somebody helped it get there. Helped to get there, right? It's the same with leadership. You as a leader got to help people get where you are and beyond. See, we're duplicators. That's what we do. That's what mentors do. That's what leaders do. They duplicate the process of success, right? When you see the mo when you see the billionaires and the millionaires, they did that for a reason. They didn't become a millionaire or a billionaire overnight. They kept duplicating the process of success, right? It's the same with you guys. As you become more successful as a leader, as a mentor, you got to duplicate the success. That's what it's about. Mentorship, leadership. That's what this program is about. And lastly, you got to help people get where you are by what? Getting good at what? Training them. We can't ask you to do anything that we haven't trained you for. Athletes, you know that. Your coach can't get mad at you if, for running the wrong play if you've never been told how to run the play. If your technique is jacked up in the gym, I can't tell you oh, you're doing that wrong because you've never been told. You run good base, but you were taught. You watch somebody or something, you model someone, you shoot pretty good basketball. You shoot pretty good basketball. However, you were taught. So the things we talked about this morning, creating the right culture for growth, we talked about three things. We talked about creating a culture of what? An assessment. Always got to assess yourself. You always have to have positive energy as a leader, as a mentor. And you've got to create a culture of leadership development. If you take those three things right there, go out of here and apply them to your life today, I guarantee you, do it for 30 days, you'll never be the same. Hey, I want to thank you guys for listening, man. Thank you. If you are what you say you are